Choosing a great Wi-Fi router is one of the first steps to building your smart home. Some of them look like giant marshmallows, others look like dead spiders, and there are a ton of different options available and different pricing as well. So in today's video, we're going to talk about getting proper internet and building a Wi-Fi system that is able to support a smart home so that you can have a smart home that works for you. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Let's start with the basics before we get into what a router is. Let's say you recently move into a new place. If you are renting or buying a home, the steps will be the same. After you move in your valuables and probably your family, the next step is to connect yourself to the outside world through the internet. To do this, you're going to need to call a local internet service provider. Most people refer to this as ISP. Depending on your area, there might be a few different options available. I would recommend calling around to see the different prices and comparisons that are out there for speed. You could even ask a neighbor what they use and if they like it. Right now, my ISP is about 50 megabits per second download and 50 megabits or MBPS upload with a monthly fee of $55 a month. Now, 50 megabits download should be plenty of speed for all your streaming needs if you have just one or two devices you're streaming. Netflix recommends to have at least 10 megabits per second download so that you can stream on at least two devices at the same time. 50 megabits per second upload works great for me because of the size of uploading 4K videos to YouTube, but 10 megabits per second will be fine just for you using social network and uploading a few pictures here and there, as well as for your smart home needs. When the ISP comes to your home, they will install a modem that brings the internet into your home. From the modem, you can then connect it through an ethernet cable into your computer to have internet. Now there are a ton of different modem options available. Now, depending on your ISP, those modems may be different. This modem worked on my new ISP, but it actually is old and because of the amount of devices I have, it just didn't work great. So we ended up having to upgrade to a different modem. Some internet providers let you use your own so you can buy it and they also have options to rent from them as well. Now, if you have a computer and you plug it directly into the modem, that should work great for that one device, but you most likely have more than one device that you wanna to connect to the internet and you are able to do that with a router. So instead of connecting that ethernet cable to just one device, you can take that cable and plug it into a router that can then broadcast your internet signal throughout your whole home. Nowadays, we simply call this whole connection Wi-Fi. Now, I do wanna mention that some ISPs have a combo device that will try and rent to you, which is a modem and an ISP router all in one. While this is a convenient solution, it is hard to take full control of your Wi-Fi and you really don't have full control and you can't choose the specifications of what it can do. And there are much better options. But if you need to temporarily rent um, something from your ISP, I would recommend doing that until you can find a router that you need that will do everything that you want it to do. Now, the next thing we need to talk about before we talk about different router options is why Wi-Fi is so important to a smart home. Many years ago, the term IoT or Internet of Things started popping up everywhere. As Wi-Fi chips became smaller and smaller, companies started to figure out how they could put these chips in more devices than just computers and smartphones, which opened up a whole new world to connecting devices to the internet. And thus was born the age of the smart home. Now, not only is my computer and cell phone connected to the Wi-Fi, but also my smartwatch, thermostat, TVs, washer and dryer, and many different smart lights and switches. Currently on my Nest Wi-Fi, I am showing 65 devices that are currently connected, which is just a ton of little tiny Wi-Fi chips. While you may never have that many devices in your home, my goal today is to help you plan better for the future. While the most basic Wi-Fi router might support your devices and a few light bulbs now, two years down the road, it might not be able to keep up with all the new devices that you have added over time. So right now you could log on to Amazon and you could search for Wi-Fi routers and purchase the very first one you see for $50 and call it good. While that might be a good option, it might not be the best thing that's going to last you for a few different years and your devices are gonna start not working very well on your new router. 
So in today's video, I've called in some help from Kyle from the YouTube channel right near home, where he has talked a lot about uh, different Wi-Fi systems and what the best Wi-Fi would be for a smart home. And he has some great experience in this. So I wanna welcome Kyle from right near home to the channel. Welcome Kyle, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Brett. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. And I'm glad that you know a little bit more. I've had a lot of different questions about the different Wi-Fi um, systems that are available. So hopefully we can give a good idea of some of the different options that are there to help uh, everyone make a better decision today. Absolutely. Okay, Kyle, can you tell me a little bit more about what kind of background you have in Wi-Fi and networking and stuff like that? Yeah, so I actually went to college at the University of North Texas. Uh, I have my uh, degree in BCIS, which stands for Business Computer Information Systems. I actually work a full-time job for a Fortune 500 company, uh, working as an infrastructure security analyst. Basically, that's just the big word for it's my job to keep the network secure at our work to ensure that we do not have intruders coming in. Uh, so that's really my background. I also own a business where I consult people uh, on their home networks as well as smart home devices as a side gig. That's awesome. So it definitely sounds like you've seen a few different networks, setups, and different router options uh, in your day. Oh, I most certainly have. I've, I've set up probably a dozen or more different variations of Wi-Fi systems in various homes around our region where I live. So let's start with kind of the basics. What are some of the different options of Wi-Fi systems that are available? So really, it just kind of depends on your preference. Most people, uh, when they sign up with their ISP or internet service provider, they are immediately given a combo modem router system. Now, these systems are typically just a dual band basic model router that'll have a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz uh, system uh, or band on there. But there's also more uh, ways you can go about uh, creating a wireless network in your home. Uh, one way to do it is to create, uh, to have wired access points in your home. Um, and this is, you know, done through uh, companies like uh, Ubiquiti and, and Unify, some of the other brands that do this. Um, the only downside to having a wired access point system is that you do have to have uh, Ethernet cables run through your home and they all need to meet in a central location where you can hook them up to a switch. Um, it does require quite a bit more maintenance and upkeep. But if you're wanting to go an easier route and want to go completely wireless, then I would highly recommend uh, various different types of mesh networks, which is basically the same concept with having multiple access points around your home, but you don't require any wires. It's all wireless. The only thing that plugs into a wire connection is from the main router into the modem or wherever your ISP is coming from. Okay, so that's similar to what I've mentioned before, the, the Wi-Fi, uh, net, the, the Google Wi-Fi system. So here we have the Google main point. So you'd plug this in directly to the modem. And then here you have a mesh point and you could have a few of these all depending on the size of your home. Correct. Would you say that's the best option for larger homes? Yes, I, I would say for, for the average consumer, that would definitely be the route I would go. Um, most mesh networks, you only need uh, two, possibly three um, access points, all based on the size of your home. Okay, great. And so for my home, it's about 2,400 square feet. This is actually all I'm using. Um, but if you have thicker walls and um, maybe you have some more concrete, you may need to get a few more points just because they can't go through the walls. Kyle, you mentioned 2.4 or 5 gigahertz networks. Can you uh, briefly explain the difference between those two types of signals? Yes, yeah, so 2.4 gigahertz, uh, basically it will travel a further distance. It will cover more area or more square footage, but the bandwidth or the amount of internet speed that you're gonna be able to get on 2.4 gigahertz is going to be uh, significantly reduced compared to the five gigahertz band, which doesn't travel as far of a distance 
but allows us to have much better uh, internet speeds over wireless. So you're saying five gigahertz might not always be the best. Like if I'm if my phone's connected to that, could I may not have the best signal? It completely depends on the location within the home in comparison to the access point. So yes, five gigahertz, you're primarily going to want to use that for streaming devices, anything that really has a big pool on bandwidth. If you have a cell phone or some sort of device that moves around the home that doesn't require as much bandwidth, then I would definitely recommend the 2.4 network. Okay, that's great. Um, so uh, I've heard a lot about 5G networks. I now have the Note 20 Ultra 5G. Is that different than the five gigahertz from Wi-Fi? Yeah, so they are. So five gigahertz for Wi-Fi is specifically the frequency of that band. It's communicating over the five gigahertz band. Now, when you hear about the new technology that is 5G, that we see a lot of these cellular companies introducing, that G specifically stands for generation. So this is the fifth generation of their wireless network system. A lot of, you might've remembered a couple of years ago that there was a 4G system that was installed. So this is just their next number sequence in that iteration. Okay, so just a new generation, but different types of signals, right? Correct, so it's completely different technologies. Um, we're talking a lot about how we can use Wi-Fi to build out our smart homes. So how many different types of connections could I have to my Wi-Fi router? So technically on a class C network, which there's three different classes, there's A, B, and C. A and B is traditionally used by the commercial world. If you have a residential router, you're going to have a class C network. Um, by definition, the maximum amount of IP addresses that you can have assigned is 254 devices in your home but you will begin to start seeing performance issues long before you get to that number of 254. Wow, that is a ton of devices. Um, right now at home, I have about 56, I think, different devices. So I'm well away from that 254 and I have quite a few. And would more devices cause the network to go slower? Yes, so um, primarily that's gonna be an issue with the 2.4 gigahertz band that we were talking about earlier. Uh, that bandwidth can very easily become overwhelmed if too many devices are connected to that network. Um, this is why I recommend if, if a device is within range of using 5G and it's not a, a um, it's not a device that's gonna be moving around the home, that I highly recommend that you try to use the five gigahertz network when possible, because the five gigahertz network has much better bandwidth and it's gonna be able to support more devices. Okay, great. Um, so you mentioned um, different types of network systems, Ubiquity and there's Google. I have an Asus over here. Are there better uh, routers for smart homes? For my clients, there's really four uh, different mesh networks that I recommend. Um, I, as far as Ubiquity and, and Unify, they're actually the same company. Ubiquity is the, the parent company of Unify. Unify is the product. Um, those are primarily going to be uh, for your wired access points based systems. Um, I definitely don't recommend that for the you know average consumer. If you're somebody that has a real knack for technology and wants to be doing more maintenance, then I would go that route. But I almost always recommend mesh networks. So there's really four brands that I recommend. And it's all completely based on what internet speed you're getting from your internet service provider. So if you're getting anything under about 300 megabits per second from your internet service provider, then I'm going to recommend either, either the Google Nest Wi-Fi system, which I know that you currently have there with you, uh, Brett, and also the Eero Pro uh, system. Both of those uh, mesh networks are really good for the lower speed uh, internet connections. Now, if you're somebody like myself who does have fiber gigabit internet and you do get 1,000 megabits per second, um, 
you know, up and down, then the two brands that I would recommend are either the Linksys Bellops or the Netgear Orbi. Both of these have a technology that is called tri-band. So if you remember earlier in our conversation, I talked about your service provider will normally send you just a dual band router. And basically what that means is that you have one 2.4 gigahertz band and one five gigahertz band. But whenever mesh network and more bandwidth requirements started to come around, they realized really quickly that they needed to add what is called the tri-band, which is an additional five gigahertz network that is specifically used for the backhaul communications between the various access points. I do have a video on my channel that does go into a little bit more depth on this concept. That's awesome. So there, I didn't even know there's more bands to help with all of that at once. That's really cool. Um, so I've seen a lot of routers that have like these antennas. Do those help the system or are they just for show? So honestly, it just really depends. I've, I've seen videos on social media where, you know, people have taken apart um, some of those routers that have those bug-like antennas. And sometimes they're just a piece of plastic. <laughs> um, sometimes they actually do um, help improve the signal, but I would say if you're using a mesh network, um, you should have good enough coverage that those bug-like antennas shouldn't really make much of a difference. Uh, those bug-like antennas are going to be more for the people that you know only have one access point or one router in their home. Oh, that's great to know. So once I get my network set up, what is the best way to make sure that I secure it so that it can't be hacked or um, somebody steal any of my information? So the first thing that I always recommend to people is to have a different password for every product or application that you have. So if you have Nest products, then have one password for your Nest account. If you have Ring products, have one password for that account and make sure that they're different passwords. When you hear all these crazy stories about somebody having their Nest or their Ring camera hacked, and you know somebody is talking to their child, um, and you know obviously that's not okay. Um, most most often they didn't get that password for from Ring or Nest. They you know hacked into another company or a bank or another institution where you have a password and the individual is using the same password across multiple um, you know, different accounts across the internet. So what I recommend is even to take it a step further than just your smart home devices is to make sure that you have a different uh, password for each account that you own. And a great way to keep up with all of this is to use a free service called LastPass. LastPass is really good because um, they have very high encryptions. They um, have actually been hacked before, but the people that stole the data weren't able to steal anything because each person's uh, passwords are protected by an encryption lock that they only have the key to. Not even LastPass can access your passwords. So that's really good on their part from, from the business perspective. But having those different passwords and having different uh, password for every account is definitely the way to go. Yeah, totally. And that's one thing I do like about the Nest Wi-Fi system is it uses my Google account and I've set up two factor authentication. So in order for me to log into my account, I then need to get a text or um, an email with a code to put in so that um, I'm the only one that is able to access that. If you're across the country trying to get in to my home, you're not going to be able to do with it. So um, anything else that we didn't talk about today, Kyle, that we should know about Wi-Fi? Well, I, you just mentioned it. I mean, I forgot to mention, but two-factor authentication is always something that you want to have enabled if it is offered to you. Um, this is just another step of security where somebody has to physically get your cell phone or physically get into an email address. It's just a second way for them to authenticate that you are the true owner of the account. And I think uh, something I've done recently is also just going into your router. So you can log into your router. Um, you can just Google your router and say how to log in. It'll kind of teach you how to log in and changing that passcode so that 
um, anybody that comes to your house, they couldn't adjust it. You would be in control of all of those settings. Recommend using your guest network. If you have a router that allows you to have a guest network um, and just giving out the password to the guest network um, anytime that you have people over to your home that want access to the Wi-Fi because the guest network is going to basically segregate or keep those devices from coming in contact with the rest of your network. Oh yeah, that is a really great idea. And it makes it easy for them to join as well without you having to give your more secure password, I guess, to them as they Correct, can. because I mean, when it comes to your network, anytime that you have to change the password for your network, now you have to go around your house and change the password on all of your devices. Like you were saying, Brett, you have you know 50 to 60 devices in your home. That's going to take a substantial amount of time. And that's not something that you really want to do every month or three months or six months. You know, you, you want to try to have a password that is secure that, you know, you maybe only change once every one to two years. Yeah, that's very true. Those are some great tips. And thank you so much, Kyle, for joining me today to help explain a bit more about Wi-Fi. There's so many different devices out there. So it's really uh, confusing to go out and buy one and find one that works. So really appreciate the recommendations. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure, Brad. Thank you for having me. So if you guys want to learn a bit more about setting up your network, I'll leave a link to Kyle's video in the description or in the card up here. And you can check a bit more about how to secure your network and some of the videos that he's made, as well as I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. So thanks, Kyle. No problem, Brett. Have a good one. So based on Kyle's recommendations, that is one of the reasons I went with the Nest Wi-Fi system. I just like how simple it is. It has the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz network, but it automatically switches between the two. So it makes it really easy to use. And I like how secure it is. And once you get it set up, it's so easy to start adding smart home products to it. Now, another router that I've used is this Asus router up here. And there's a ton of settings to it and it doesn't automatically update. So if you want that, there are a ton of those options available, but I like the simplicity of this. Now, every home is different. So you may need to look for something that has just one point or many different points. Um, so I would definitely recommend that you take your time to find the right router for you. If you've always had Wi-Fi issues, definitely check out mesh Wi-Fi networks. Or if you need um, some of the newest standards like Wi-Fi 6, if you need lots of speed or just a basic router, there are tons of different options for those. So do your research, make sure that it has the features you want and that it gets lots of good reviews. So if you do have any further questions about setting up your Wi-Fi network, please let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you get them set up. I'll reach out to Kyle as well and see if he can help answer some of those questions. So then once you have good internet in your home with a great Wi-Fi signal, you are then ready to start adding devices to your smart home. So as we mentioned, you can add devices directly to your Wi-Fi or another option is to get a smart hub to add devices to it. And so that's the next topic of the smart home playlist here. So you can head over here to learn more about that. Or if you wanna learn about how I set up my Nest Wi-Fi, you can check out the video down here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.